This episode of the Moms Network is brought to you in part by Trunnell Insurance, independent agents specializing in auto home insurance and teen drivers, and Code in You, writing the future. Welcome to the Moms Network, a talk show focused on all things mom related. Today, my co host Patty, Sarita, and I are joined by Sakina of Code New. Children and technology is the topic, and we are excited to dive in. Sakina, how did you find yourself in the business of coding? So, um, first, I, I was like, truly passionate about like technology when I was growing up. I got my first computer when I was 10 or 11 years old. Oh, wow. Uh, and I got into coding when I was 15. Okay. Um, then after I graduated with my degrees and I was working for a while, um, I realized that mm, technology is everywhere around us and kids need to learn how to like, create this technology uh, and um, develop problem-solving skills as a result of learning how to build technology. Mm -hmm. And I realized that all along, uh, while growing up and while going to college, I loved to teach um, you know, my peers how to code. Um, and I thought that not only coding is something that I'm passionate about, I love teaching as well. Uh, so I kind of wanted to combine the two and merge the two, uh, merge together. The two and like build this business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, thank you. And I know you've been open for a few years now. Yes. So yes. Um, it's a it's just such a great space for me. Yes. I look at computers and I'm like, I know how to turn it on. I know my social media. <laughs> yeah. But like you know, I got filmed at an event and I have a video on my phone and. People are like, can you send it to me? I'm like, that would require me knowing how to get it off my phone <laughs> and to you. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but that's what teenagers are for. Like, right. yeah, yeah, like this, how do I do Let's this? just do this because I'm amazed. Like you were talking about the, like even the problem solving skills, like the things that they learn because they have grown up in this world of right. using mm -hmm. and building technology. Yes. Exactly. Yep. That they not only know how to get that video <laughs> off your phone, but they also know how to solve problems very quickly. Right. Right. And I, until you just said that, I don't think I really connected the dots between mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. and like overall problem solving, not just in the world of technology. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, we went to this thing, um, one of those um, escape rooms downtown, and my friend Monica and I took our six teenagers or five teenagers, and we were worried that they were gonna get frustrated mm -hmm. and that we were gonna have to help them. Total reverse, right? right? right. The way your brain has to work to get through mm -hmm. some of those harder right. ones. Yeah. I mean, Monica and I were looking at each other like, do you know what's going on? I don't know what's mm -hmm. going on. And they're running around in circles yeah. understanding it. Yes. And we got out of it like, oh, wow, we should have been worried about us, not them. <laughs> and I really, it is. I think it's that training. And they're right. also not afraid of it. Exactly. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, you, I think our generation is more apprehensive like, to oh, just yeah. anytime, you know, right. the model of the phone changes or yeah. it's new windows. Right. But uh, kids have grown up with technology. Yes. Yes. I find they're less apprehensive to right. And easily adaptable to exactly. new. So, uh, so I have teenagers in my house. So definitely, technology has become a critical part of their day-to-day -day life. Yes. And what are your thoughts? I know there's always the battle between the parents and the kids <laughs> about what is appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, should there be moderations? Is there healthy aspects of technology we can incorporate. So what are your thoughts? So um, as I mentioned before, like my kids are younger, you know, mm -hmm. they're two and nine. So as a family, we still haven't faced the issues, sure. you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, our son will soon be a teenager and then we'll get to it. But as a person myself, I think that, yes, we need to have uh, it and use it in moderation. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why creating is also another aspect that we can encourage them to go into. Um, so they are exposed to technology, they're using technology, but at the same time, they are learning the uh, aspects behind what goes behind the technology. Mm -hmm. uh, and that makes it, 
uh, interesting. And even if they spend uh, an hour more doing that, they're actually learning mm -hmm. um, a lot. It's and, yeah, it's educational. It's not yeah. just I'm watching funny cat videos on exactly, YouTube. Exactly. Right. Right. It's not yeah. mindless. Right. It's really right. training their brains potentially for a career later in life sure, as well. Yes, yeah. right. And right. Uh, if you think about it, everything around us is like driven by algorithms, like mm. what movie you watch on Netflix, right. or to yes. what you buy on Amazon, even if we believe that you know we're doing it in controlled ways and we are not affected by the algorithms, we are. Right. You know? right. So, right. Uh, we, uh, we have all these feeds that are oh, suggestions that you should buy this, mm -hmm. and we do that, right? So um, it's important that uh, our kids uh, learn that how to develop these algorithms and develop uh, the computational thinking skills by learning how to create, um, you know, technology. Uh, so that is important. But uh, to answer your question, I think yes, we should have it in moderation. It should not affect our health, and yeah. you know. Um, sleeping late at night or just being consumed by technology is not a good thing for sure. When I see I a new patient who might be a six-year-old with headaches, I have to look at the mom and him and like, so how much screen time is yes. going on? And yes. the mom's like, yeah. I told you. you yeah. know? <laughs> and yeah. really like the whole text neck thing, like people get really worried about mm -hmm. the world in the future. Yeah. And that's, as a chiropractor, that's the thing that actually really worries me is spinal health. And I know yes. most people don't stay up at night yeah. thinking about <laughs> spinal health. Yeah, right. But the, 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 posture. the posture that we ha that people are in yeah. from one years old being on an iPad right. and the support, of, the support of the cervical spine and the, the degradation of the spine happening so much faster, mm -hmm. it's like it scares me. Right. So and it is a very good point. Uh, that's something that I, even I worry about for myself. Yeah, right. you know? And, um, you know, so we have at work now, at workplaces um, where these technology companies, they have all these walking treadmills mm -hmm. and stand, mm -hmm. yeah. sit to stand desks. Yep. And this is because those of that great. issue, you know. So yep. it's similar to like sports, you know, like if you introduce, we, want, we have to introduce sports at a younger age. Mm -hmm. We should, it's good. But at some point, you know, if you pressure the child too much and, sure. you know, if it goes beyond and affects their health, right. um, you know, it's, it's not a good thing. So there has to be uh, a balance, I think so. Right? So what age, um, when it comes to, like, creating technology, like the coding part of that, mm -hmm. like how young is too young to get your kid interested in all of that? Um, I mean, kids as young as four and five year old. I mean, I get wow. parents uh, with that age group. We, like, you know, uh, I personally start at seven. But mm -hmm. uh, we do get like a lot of requests, you know. For, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, they can do unplugged activities. Uh, they don't have to sit in front of an I iPad. As I said, you know, developing the logical thinking skills, you don't need right. a computer mm -hmm. for that. Yeah. Uh, but those kind of activities, and then use a little bit of iPad maybe for half an hour, 15 minutes, you know, have a small class for like, or a small session for doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, um, you know, uh, use Lego or something, you know, mm, to yeah. build uh, things. I know. Yeah. They're like really that. just timeless. Generation after generation, right. yeah. they yeah. are a good toy to have. Yeah. Yeah. Some and now of the kids, it's so advanced. Right? Yes. right, right. Yeah. Some of the kids got little sets to put together. And we're all, like, mm -hmm. on the ground, like, let's build right. some Legos. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's <laughs> right. so true. But like, it, it does. It, do it uses your brain in a specific way. Exactly. And, and yeah. that's always, right. always and awesome. And it's also that whole fine motor skills and spatial skills. So they're doing something where there's eye hand coordination. coordination exactly. So question for you, you know, how do you get a child who's a passive user of technology in the sense watching videos or playing games to get them to t that next level of being an active user where right. they're actually into coding yeah. or understanding behind the scenes. Yeah. So how do uh, yeah. that might be a happy medium for parents. Yes. So what yeah. is what can we do as parents to get them to be those active users? Yeah, uh, what we uh, can encourage is that what we do is um, we get students of all kinds, and you know, kids are all very different. Some mm -hmm. are not even like, into technology at all. You know, like right. they don't even li like so to. Parents are like you're gonna go do this. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna do this exactly. Um, so then you kind of pull their interest. If they like to watch movies or YouTube videos, then um, teaching them how to you know make a movie or an animated mm. movie. Um, you know, claymations like you know you actually mm -hmm. uh, make um, characters with clay, like yeah. a Toy Story character with clay, and yep. then shoot a video out of it. So um, so you're animating and play things, and That's then you're really actually cool. coding at the back, a little bit of coding, huh. a little bit of that, and you're combining their interests. 
you know, introducing like drones. Yeah. Uh, we have like a, my husband, he has a, he got a drone like for, um, you know, shooting videos and photographs and things like that. Uh, now, you know, you introduce that and um, show that to a child that mm -hmm. look at this drone. Now we can code this drone to fly and to do what you want to do, you want it to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, there might be some in kids who are, you know, into outdoor activities who get uh, fascinated by rockets and drones. Mm -hmm. and so they might want to get, uh, so you know, that that's one way of introducing coding to them. Sure. So it's not necessarily that they have to sit in front of a computer, in front of a black screen and type yeah. in code. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, and so I think the that's different ways of so bringing great. in it to do that is to pull in what they're interested in already and mm -hmm. then pull yes. it into that technology yes. world instead of you need to learn how to do this because right. our world right. is filled with technology. Like right. let's start with what you're already interested exactly. in. Yeah. I love that. I know for my kids, you know, we always have like no no phones at the table, right? Mm -hmm. And there's definitely some breaks. Like if I notice they're playing mm -hmm. some sort of game for right. way too long, I'm like, guys, come on, let's mm -hmm. go. Yes, but they have enough interests outside of it. That's and they good. have work and they have girlfriends and they have friends and they right. like to be outside. And, you know, so I think they have a pretty good balance. Yes. But it's still, I mean, it's still a couple hours a day that they're on some sort of right. technology. Yeah. Yeah. And I know for myself, at some point at the end of the day, I'm like, I just need to unplug. Right. right. I mean, with all the stuff that happens online and social media right. with running the branch, it's all I mean, I could do it's it 24 crazy. hours a day right. and right. it never ends. Right. right. And so I, I need to sometimes be like, all right, I forgot my phone when we went to Jason's dad's uh, two weekends ago. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's a nice little really break, right. isn't it? <laughs> isn't <that> amazing? <laughs> and, so. and I think for our generation, because we know of a time before technology. Mm. Right. Yeah. So. Exactly. We have that comparison, or to your point, we want to decompress. But with the kids, they've just grown with technology, mm -hmm. so it doesn't phase them as much as yeah. it uh, phases us. True. True. Now, what are your thoughts on um, if they're playing a video game or in front of the computer? Um, is there an ideal time to do and then take a break so it's not much of a strain on the eyes? Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I think I mean, like I think a couple of hours a day is quite a bit. I mean, I yeah. know it doesn't yeah. stay that much. Mm -hmm. You know, right. when they get hooked on, it's like for a long time. <laughs> uh, but I would I would say like an, uh, a break, like a good break, whether they go out or they're you know playing a board game or. Uh, you know, with the winter here, it's not possible to go out sure. all the time. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, you just like involved, have a chat or, you know, play a game where everyone is involved, like a board game. Yeah. Um, or, you know, just read. Or again, like after playing a video game, reading might be hard. Uh, so just doing an activity where they just completely take a break uh, yeah. and actually get involved with their family. And <laughs> <laughs> right. what's going Let's on. have a little visit. Yeah, <laughs> just go shovel the snow outside or something right. like that. Right. You know, some physical activity as well. <laughs> so, and we just, Sarita had mentioned, you know, that we have had, our kids have grown up in this world of technology. Mm -hmm. What kind of trends and things do you see like over the next five years that are gonna change just with technology and what our kids are doing? Um, yeah, I think, you know, like the um, education, like the way they're learning things now is rapidly changing. Mm -hmm. If you think about it in the last 10 years, um, my son is nine, as I said, and my daughter is two. There is like a huge difference. Oh, I in can't just those imagine seven that. years, yeah. right. the way she is, like she has no idea of like a world without <laughs> technology. There's Alexa. Yeah. Like, uh, Alexa plays this. I mean, like, like, uh, <laughs> so Alexa is at the beck and call, you know, for uh, my two year old. Yeah. Uh, so uh, things are going to like rapidly change. And um, I think we just need to uh, step back a little bit sometimes and uh, take a break, as, as we said, like we talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, and do everything in moderation, I feel. Um, and it, it's important, again, to introduce kids uh, to things which are more technical, more hands-on. Uh, and they're also learning how to, you know, uh, make these things. So mm -hmm. as we said, you know, Lego at a younger age, or yeah. drones for like older kids, or uh, robots that they're working on. So something more hands-on mm -hmm. uh, than learning how to like, you know, code and understand how things work behind the technology. And as far as using it, again, it, of course, you, they, they want to play games, they can play games, but yep. uh, having, you know, the family rules, I that think. That balance. Yeah, the balance. <laughs> the balance between, you know, physical activity and the mental health and yeah. just uh, overall balance. Yeah. I know I saw somewhere that we're, um, it was something about we're teaching our kids for um, jobs that we don't even know yes. are yes. going to be available. So, or have right. been created. Yeah. Yeah. Which could be a whole nother, mm -hmm. right. whole nother show. Thank you, Sakina, for joining us today and for all that you do for kids in our community. We'll be right back with more of the Moms Network. Stay tuned.
This episode of the Moms Network is brought to you in part by Trunnell Insurance, independent agents specializing in auto home insurance and teen drivers, and Code in You, writing the future. Everything is driven by technology. Technology is everywhere. And it is important that we take the kids back on the other side of these gadgets, on the other side of the technology, and help them be technology creators rather than mere consumers. And also coding has become a necessary 21st century skills that allows them to think creatively and it, it ignites problem solving skills. We need to teach them how to code so that they become creative thinkers and problem solvers in the future. We provide a small class size uh, so that we can offer individual focus and a four is to one student teacher ratio. When we teach elementary and middle school kids how to code at that early age, it's like learning a new language. Uh, the younger you are, the faster you learn. And by the time they reach high school, they are ready to take their AP computer science courses and excel in those as well. get this all the time we get it from people obviously one of the main times when people are worried about their cost is when they've got that teenager rolling in mm -hmm. and they're worried how are they gonna do um, so we have people call up and I get all the time they say my friend told me <laughs> that I don't need to add my teenager to the policy they're automatically covered because insurance goes with the vehicle and that is not true This episode of the Moms Network is brought to you in part by Trunnell Insurance, independent agents specializing in auto home insurance and teen drivers, and Code in You, writing the future. Welcome back to the Moms Network. Teen drivers, oh my. I have two of them in my house and watching them drive off is never the most comfortable thing for a mom. Patty Sarita and I welcome Anthony Trunnell of Trunnell Insurance for this discussion. I know the three of us all have teen drivers. Mm -hmm. Anthony, help. How do you start the process <laughs> when you have a family that's kind of coming into your system with a new teen driver? Well, um, obviously people are always curious. We actually hear about it typically a year before when they get the right. permit because right. that immediately makes them nervous and they think they have to add them to the policy. Oh, okay. And they want to know, of course, what, how much does it cost. So you don't need that's to. All. For most companies, you don't. Okay. I actually have a couple that do, and I'm, I'm not really sure why. They, they, I think they're paranoid that they're not going to be added eventually or something. Mm, gotcha. But um, they, uh, most companies don't require just because they know that a parent has to be in the vehicle right. with them at all. Sure, yeah. so, sure. But I mean, you still have people. Like I just had a kid that she was with her dad, and they just like hit something, oh, <laughs> which no. is terrible. And then, you know, oh, that that's awful. Right. Yeah, no, yeah. So, so especially as a, a new driver, a new right? Accident, it's like this. Oh. This <laughs> But and you have a uh, Yeah, uh, my, my daughter driver. just turned 16 last month, so I'm right in the mix with you guys. Okay. So, and that was weird, uh, watching her <laughs> drive off to school. Every, right. But it's nice because I don't have to do that right. for anything. Right. So, so it's it a enjoyable. big shift in parenting. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's like all of a sudden you're like, oh, I don't have to pick up from martial arts at 8.45 on every Monday. It right. was really nice. I thought it was kind of liberating, even it's though it's a little nice scary. And scary. Like, you get both emotions at the Absolutely. exact same time. Like, mm -hmm. I love not driving, but I was saying before we started that my son drove to lacrosse practice by himself, and I was, how will he get there? <laughs> what happens if the parking lot's full? How will he pull? And it was like, suddenly I was asking every question, and he's my third driver, and I'm still kind of like, oh, until he gets, I don't know how old, maybe like 21, 22. I don't I'll know. feel good will about that it. happen? I don't know. <laughs> I'm still waiting. You mentioned yeah. about the insurance. I kind of wanted to, because that is like uh, kind of a, a new thing for parents. It's a new yeah. parenting mm -hmm. world. So when is it, like what can they expect when their insurance when policies right. when they have a teen driver? You, do you hate to put numbers? Everybody wants a number, <laughs> right, right? right? They all want a number. Yeah. <laughs> I would say on average, let's say that you're going from two cars. Mm -hmm. So you've got yeah. mom and dad drive and two cars in a house, let's say. Um, you add on occasional operator. I would say you're probably looking at around eighty dollars a month. 
okay. would be my guess. Okay. Okay. Now, I've seen kids where they come on and they're $50 a month. I've seen kids where they come on and they're 150 to 180 a month. It depends on wow. your vehicles. It depends on you know, grades. mom and dad's driving history, their grades. That's like, I think that's still about 25% right now is their okay. grades. It's, it's, it's one of their big indicators. So, so there's that lots of things that, yeah. that Well, they don't have as many because they don't have a history. Mm -hmm. um, but I th I, I've seen stats before, though, where, where they can tell that typically kids are like their parents or something. I don't know. <laughs> there's, it's all a guess. It's all a <clears throat> guess. Right, that's right. why they're big in these apps now. There's a lot, Some companies are coming out now. I can't remember what it's, it's called, like Teen Smart. Well, Teen Smart's a driving program. But they have this app. Uh, one of my companies, a lot of growing, uh, are going to it, where they put it on their phone, and then the parents actually get a report Every oh week. yeah, my friend has that. So they that. know, really? and, and it's crazy because like they know how fast you accelerate. Uh -huh. They know how fast, how hard you turn, like G forces. Mm -hmm. They know if you're you're braking hard. Really? And, and this one company oh actually. Uh, that's new. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's 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 brand new. It's uh -huh. it's really interesting. But um, uh, with this company, if if the kid does really well every month, they actually send them um, e cards from like Amazon for five to seven bucks. Oh wow! As, as like an incentive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's really yeah. cool. It's really cool. I remember so. being at my friend's house. She's like, oh. My son was doing 50 in a 25 or something, right? Wow. And we might have had one little ticket in our house. It literally was on Book Road when it goes from like 45 to <laughs> yeah, 30 yeah. really quickly. Right. And right. it's uh, the, uh, the day after, I was going pretty close to what he got a ticket for. I'm like, but it's, he's You're like, it's not fair. It's a speed mm -hmm. trap. I'm like, it's well, it is what it is. You just need to be aware of it. And, right. Right. But it's hard to go quite that slow, I but know. you have to. Especially so, with our newer cars, they're so quieter and smoother, so it's mm -hmm. just very easy to... You're not paying to, attention. Yeah, yeah. Also, yeah. Right. yeah it does. I'm going fast. When I got my Jeep, it's you have to really press the gas pedal harder. So I was driving to work a couple of times, so. and I realized I'm going like seven under the speed limit because it doesn't. It feels like I'm ah. going faster <laughs> than I am. Uh, so I've had to really like lay on the gas just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Any law changes that you've seen that have kind of you know, changed <sighs> teens in driving, like cell phones and... The big change for cell, that's probably the only change that I think that happened on January 1st, is that if, it used to be if you got a cell phone ticket, it was just like a ticket. Okay. Mm -hmm. But now it's actually a chargeable offense. It's a point now. Okay. Which makes sense. Because if you think about it, you know, if you're speeding, you're just kind of going fast. But yeah. if you're on your cell phone, you're mm. distracted. Yeah, you're not it, And that's more attention. likely to result in something. Right. So, so what were some of the changes with the cell phone, uh, even if it's mounted on something? Is it, How does it work with the I new? I don't know exactly. Okay. I think if it's in your hand. I okay. think if you've got it in, like, in between your, you know, your, your face and the steering wheel, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think it's up to the officer's <clears throat> discretion. Because I've had some people get it, and they're like, oh, I just glanced at it. But, you know, the officer happened to be sitting right next to them. Like, right. An intersection like, or I watched you do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think the car's supposed to be in park. Even if you're sitting in an intersection, technically, you're not supposed to be on it. Okay. Because yeah. especially and now that a lot of the teenagers use the cell phone for directions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. You know. But it, I, I think if you've got it up okay. there, I don't think like they're going to do okay. the same. You know what I mean? Right. But it's so like, can you even like hit a couple buttons on it? I mean, I, I don't know. I don't right. know all the nuances. I'm sure. I haven't read you know? the, it's, okay. it just happens. So I don't know. <laughs> right. I don't know. <laughs> so they need to get back out the maps. Like, let's go back <laughs> to the Rand McNally <laughs> ahead. Atlas and make them pull over at the side of the road and find their way. Let's just out. do that. Right. right. I don't think they're ever going to do that. I don't think that. so either. They're, they probably don't even know that that happened. Right. right. <laughs> True. That existed. So what are some of the more common claims you see uh, with teenage drivers on insurance? Or what are some of the bigger You know, most of it is for? just careless stuff. You know, okay. like backing. Yeah. You see a lot of that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or like a rear end collision. Those are the two most common. But um, I mean, I, for my customers, I haven't seen that many you know, like the big ones where the right. bad intersection accident or something um, involving a team. But I, it's just the careless stuff. It's just easy. You know, like my daughter, I mean, I think the, the biggest, going back to your last segment you had with the phones, you know, when that phone is in her car and it buzzes, it's like the kids have to know <sighs> what it is. And it's like, it's yeah. not important, but right. they have, it's like triggered to their True. brain or something. Right. And yeah. I think that's the, that's the biggest problem right now. Because she's a very yeah. responsible kid and everything, but that phone buzz is, it's just, They're they distracted. can't resist. Yeah. Yeah. They have, um, I think AAA has these orange little containers that you can put the cell phone yes, in that, that to completely blocks the signal. So, so it okay. does, you know, oh, that's um, which yeah. is, which is really good for an adult. Like I have kids, like I feel like to completely block if I was getting a phone call or something like that makes you feel a little uncomfortable. But for a teen driver, there's nothing you need to respond to that's more important than you, right. you know, Absolutely. making sure that you're learning how to drive. Oh yeah. Um, I know for my boys, it's, it's just been trying to drill it in their head. Like mm -hmm. you have a big metal slash plastic right. machine 
machine that you're driving at True. 40 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Like you are responsible for not only your life, the but car, everyone you. but everyone around yeah. you, right? right? Mm -hmm. And so texting is just not an option. Um, and if you're getting a phone call, you're getting a text, like if you- They're if just you, gonna have to wait. You, yeah, you wait or mm -hmm. pull over if you want to, yeah. you know? It's easy. Yeah. yeah. You just park and you're yeah. good. Right. And now that I'm old, I go to bed before my kids. So <laughs> my rule with the communication is, it used to be, hey, text me when you get there, when they were first driving. And we're off of that now. But now it's, text me get when I get home. So if I wake up at one, I can pull up my phone. All right, both kids are in. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and I don't have to worry. So that's our, uh, our little <laughs> no, rule of communication. Still do. We're still doing the text when you get there, text when you're getting ready to leave. I just like to know that you're on the road. Like, mm -hmm. I just need yeah. that. And my daughter is 24, <laughs> and she has her own life. Like, she's a college graduate, has a job, has her own car, yes. her own insurance, everything. And I still, when she travels, I make her text me when she leaves <laughs> and when she gets there. Like, if she's going to not like every mine. day. Like, 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 to go to Walgreens? No, not like to go to oh. Walgreens. Oh, like a big trip. Or no, like, yeah, like a big trip. Not like yeah. going to work every day, text me when right, you get right, there. Right. Right. But yeah. I still make her do that because there's something about, from a parent standpoint, sure. your kid being on the road. And yeah. sometimes it's not that I am worried about them not being responsible. I'm worried about everyone else on the road oh, yeah. and how that's going to affect. So I, I still do Just for that. your peace of mind. Right. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you guys use that Find My iPhone app? I was yeah. just yeah. Uh, yeah. Plus my wife is on that all the time. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> there's a Find My Phone. There's the 360 yep, where yep. I know a lot of my friends, they know exactly where their kids are point mm -hmm. I've hesitated to put it on because you know it's like how much is too much or not yeah. or I, if I, we, I, I do you know what I mean yeah I, then I'd be very worried every second what are your thoughts on that I don't know I mean because I remember you know when I was a kid mm -hmm. <laughs> you could be anywhere I get I get on a bike <laughs> yeah. and my mom yeah. would be like see you tonight at yeah. dinner yeah. Yeah. Just, like and, and I just took off and right. then she never checked on me or anything so <laughs> right. it's weird right we were right. like crawling so, underneath the water passageways underneath yeah. the roads and in the woods You're just wandering climbing trees yeah. way they just too knew high. you'd be home yeah. for dinner they came out right? alive mm -hmm. like, yeah and we survived yeah right. right and we came out so it's like you try to balance that but it is convenient though when you just Look on the phone. Like, oh, that's where they're at. Oh, that's where they're at. Well, and it, when they get to college, just a tip for all parents: yes. <laughs> take it. Don't watch them. Like, don't <laughs> right. pay attention to find my iPhone when they're in college because right. it will make mm -hmm. you insane. So uh -huh. right. just let it happen because we all had mm -hmm. those moments. Like, yeah. My kids have it, find their iPhone on their phones, and I think my ex-husband does too. Um, I've just chosen not to swing the pendulum that far. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I, I, I don't, there's something about it that makes me feel like, I wouldn't want to have been tracked all the yeah. time, but yeah. then God forbid something happens, I'm right. gonna be like, well, I lost that opportunity, right? Yeah. It's 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 almost like this fear of something's gonna happen or they're gonna be somewhere I don't know or they're hurt and I, but, I don't know. I think yeah. it's a decision also you have to make knowing your teenager, how they feel. Because sometimes some teenagers feel then they're given no sense of freedom right. and that everything oh, yeah. is tracked, you know? So I think it just depends from kid to kid. Yeah, for sure. I think the parent-kid mm -hmm. relationship is very different. Right. And, and different kids may have different have signs it. of like, hey, sorry, you're going to be tracked. Like, yes. you, we, we haven't built up enough <laughs> trust yet. Yeah, you yeah, know? exactly. Or you <laughs> have built enough. You, and right, I'm, right. I'm yeah. Yeah. Or your kids can also track you, like on a fine line. Right. Yeah. And there I have been know. times when I've been like at Target and yeah. my son will be like, hey, can you bring home some Doritos? I'm like, <laughs> how do you even know where I am? I just looked on Find My iPhone. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I can't do, now you're I being can't do tried, anything. Right, right, you're tried. being watched, right. Patty. <laughs> you know, the interesting thing I was going to say about the, that app now, mm -hmm. it used to be, I don't know if you guys, when, when it came app. out, that you could, they wanted it plugged yes, into the bottom of the steering wheel. that's what I was wheel. thinking. Oh. But see, you know, it used to be, it used to just track how many miles it drove, and that's all they cared about. Right. And then the cell phones came along. To be honest with you, companies don't really care that much about how much you drive. They're paranoid. Are they paying attention to the road? Yeah, that's Let's what the app's about. And so now all of them are on the apps now. They don't okay. even really care how many miles. They're like, is this guy paying attention when he's driving or not? Is there some benefits from an insurance aspect? Yeah, there are actually. Um, some companies, when you put it on, they'll give you a, a discount. Mm -hmm. You know, because you're you're doing it and you're kind of giving them a, a window into your habits. And a little everything. proactively. Yeah, and then right. other times, if you drive, you know, um, very safely, I, some companies they'll give you up to thirty percent. Oh wow! So and oh. it's a combination of everything. I mean, there is some mileage included in there. But a lot of it is, you know, are you paying attention? Right. And like I said, and it's weird. The app knows, um, you know, uh, the logistically, 
when you're driving, when you're on a train. It's like it, it's mm. weird. It's all programmed. Wow. So they know the speed limit of the, the, the road that you're mm -hmm. on at that point in the road. I mean, it's all, that I'm telling you, crazy. all that information is in the system now. It's, it's crazy how intricate it is. Yeah, it so, is crazy. And, and are they able to tell, are you on your phone or not? Well, they, yeah, because it, it, it knows. Like if the screen <laughs> turns knows. on and it knows they if know. you unlock it, you know, or whatever, oh, right. it, it, it knows that the right. phone's being used. So, huh. and that's what they, that's what they care about. They, okay. I mean, they care about the other stuff, but it's the main thing. Yeah. Because it's just like everybody does it. I yeah. keep saying it's kind of like the new drunk driving thing. Yeah. But, but, but everybody does it every single day, all the time. Right. Correct. You know, yep. it's, it's not yep. just some Friday night. Nope. It's no, a it's a big, big issue. Yeah, it's right. a big issue. So. Teen drivers, insurance, texting while driving, accidents. No wonder moms don't sleep that well. <laughs> it was great to have you on the show today to help us navigate these issues, Anthony. Thanks for watching the Moms Network. And remember, you're always invited. Thank you. This episode of the Moms Network is brought to you in part by Trunnell Insurance, independent agents specializing in auto home insurance and teen drivers, and Code In You, writing the future.